But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all of these things to the eleven and to all of the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other with him who were with them when they told these things to the disciples. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and he ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home marveling at what had happened. Welcome to Easter Sunday service at Trinity Baptist Church. We're glad you joined us this morning for Easter service. For our worship hymns this morning, we're going to sing Low in the Grave He Lay and Crown Him with Many Crowns. If you want to look those words up on the internet, they are available. Um, if you want to sing with us, that's great. <laughs>
Amen. And it's working? As we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ this morning, I'm reminded of a funeral service that I attended just a, a few weeks before all of this started. And as I was there, the, the pastor got up to preach, and it wasn't a bad message, but then he started talking about the resurrection. And he began with the resurrection of Jesus. And he said, you know, I don't know if it was a spiritual resurrection or a physical resurrection that took place. And as he said those words, I'm sitting in the congregation and I'm absolutely astounded at what I'm hearing this pastor preach. Because I'm thinking, man, if you don't know what kind of resurrection it was that Jesus experienced, you need to sit down and shut up. And quit preaching and let somebody else that does know what type of resurrection it was do the preaching. The Bible says that on that first Sunday morning when they went to the tomb, that the tomb was empty. Jesus Christ was physically raised from the dead. That is the most central belief of the Christian faith. As a matter of fact, everything that is unique and peculiar about Christians compared to any other religious belief in the world is because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is that that defines everything else that we believe. So if we get the resurrection of Jesus wrong, then we're going to get everything else wrong. What is it that the Bible has to say to believers about the resurrection of Jesus Christ? I would like you to take your Bibles this morning and turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. To 1 Corinthians chapter 15, known as the resurrection chapter. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we're going to begin reading in verse number 12, and we're going to read to verse number 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning at verse number 12. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead. But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that He raised Christ, whom He did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. Not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people to be most pitied. Would you pray with me? Lord God, we thank you for the physical resurrection of the body of Jesus Christ this morning. And we recognize that our entire faith is built upon that one fact, that one belief that we treasure and hold dear. It is at the very center and heart of all that we believe about you, of everything that we believe about Christ and everything we believe about ourselves in Christ. 
We praise you, O oh God, this Easter Sunday morning that Jesus has indeed been raised from the dead. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. According to this passage, as Paul is talking about uh, the resurrection from a negative point of view, there are several things as we go through this passage and through the remainder of 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 15 that we can begin to understand about the centrality of the resurrection of Christ and about the implication of this one belief on everything else that we believe. The first thing that I would have you note this morning is that the resurrection of Christ vindicates the cross. We walk through all seven sayings of Christ from the cross ending on Good Friday. I will remind you of that sixth saying where he said, it is finished. From the lips of Christ, we have delivered to us that our salvation was secured by his sacrifice. That's what Jesus said about his own sacrifice. But what is it that God the Father has to say to us about the sacrifice of Jesus. Here Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he said, if Christ is not raised from the dead, you are still in your sins. In other words, the resurrection of Jesus Christ speaks to us about the acceptance of the sacrifice on the behalf of God the Father. You and I can know beyond a shadow of a doubt this morning that heaven is our home, that our sins have been forgiven, that we are rightly related to God this morning because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The cross has been vindicated by the resurrection. The second thing that we would note is that the resurrection of the cross proves that Jesus was who he said he was. The resurrection of Christ proves that Jesus was who he said he was. Now the Bible tells me both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, about individuals who died, who were raised by either some great prophet or by Christ himself or by one of the apostles of Jesus Christ. Those stories are given to us. And yet it is given to us in such a sense, in such a way, that we are to understand that every individual who experienced this awesome, fantastic miracle from the hand of a prophet or from the hand of Christ or from the hand of an apostle of Jesus Christ did indeed die again. However, the Bible is clear that the resurrection of Jesus is different from all of those other resurrections. And what is it that makes it different? What makes it different is that there was no mediator in the raising of Jesus Christ from the dead. As I stated, in all other resurrections, we have the link of a great prophet or the link of Jesus or the link of an apostle that raised someone from the dead. But Christ Jesus was raised without the mediation of another individual. The Bible tells me in John chapter 10, verses 17 to 19, that Jesus predicted that he would raise himself from the dead. Galatians chapter 1, verse number 1, says that the Father raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And Romans chapter 8, verse number 11, says that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, raised 
Christ Jesus from the dead. In other words, the Bible tells me that the three divine persons of the one Godhead that is the one God raised Christ Jesus from the dead. By raising Christ Jesus from the dead in this manner, the Bible is proclaiming to us that Jesus was indeed both a man because he first had to die to be raised again, but that he was more than just a man, that he himself was the creator God that had made the entire universe and held the universe in the palm of his hand. This man, this Jew from Galilee, who was a carpenter turned itinerant preacher, was indeed the God of the universe. The resurrection of Christ Jesus vindicates the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. The resurrection of Christ Jesus proves that he was who he said he was. And Jesus said, I and the Father are one. It was for that reason, the high priest called it blasphemy, that Jesus Christ went to the cross of Calvary. Jesus did not go to the cross of Calvary for his teachings because we have discovered through the ages that a number of the rabbis at the time of Jesus or before the time of Jesus or even after the time of Jesus held the same beliefs that Jesus did, that they taught the same teachings that Jesus taught. Jesus was not crucified for his teachings. Jesus was not crucified for his miracles. Jesus was crucified because he claimed to be the God of the ages. Make no doubt about it, my friend. When we say that we are followers of Jesus, we are proclaiming the centrality of the resurrection of Jesus Christ on Easter Sunday morning as the vindication of the cross of Christ and for the fact that the resurrection of Jesus differed from any other resurrection because Jesus was never to die again. There was no mediator in the raising of Christ proclaims that Christ Jesus is God. Further, the resurrection of Christ from the empty tomb proclaims that you and I will live again. That you and I will live again. That's what 1 Corinthians 15 is all about. The fact that Jesus physically rose from the dead. Therefore, those of us who are followers of Christ Jesus understand that what the Bible teaches to us is that all of those who now sleep in the earth, that everyone who dies before the return of the great king will indeed be raised from the dead. The Bible says that we will receive bodies like Jesus Christ. Now we understand that the physical body of Jesus Christ has indeed been changed. We understand that. We understand that it is fit for heaven itself. The Bible says that flesh and blood cannot enter into the kingdom of God. But I will remind you that after the resurrection, when Jesus appeared to the disciples, when Thomas was present, that Jesus asked Thomas to touch his hands, to touch his side. Why? Because the Bible says that he was flesh and bone. The Bible says that he met them by the Sea of Galilee, where Jesus, in his resurrected body, made breakfast for the disciples made breakfast for the disciples. Yes, we understand that it is a spiritual being that we are talking about, but it is a spiritual being with a physical body. Our physical bodies, though destroyed, though decayed, will be raised 
again. And we will be like the Savior. It is for this reason that Jesus quotes the Old Testament psalm when it says, does the scripture not say that ye are gods? In other words, we are going to be made like the Son of God. We will all be, ways be less than God, but we will have a physical body like the Son of God, a body that will know no sin, a body that will know no sorrow, a body that will know no sickness, a body that will never, ever experience death again. The resurrection of Christ vindicates the cross of Calvary. The resurrection of Christ proves that Jesus was who he said he was. The resurrection of Christ proves that you and I have hope for the future. That the cemetery and the grave are not the end. That there is more to life that we can see and that you and I will live again. And finally this morning, the resurrection of Christ proves that Jesus Christ will return again. That Jesus Christ will return again. Throughout his ministry, he preached that he would have to die. He preached that he would be resurrected. And later on, after the resurrection, he ascended to the right hand of the Father and sits on the throne of heaven today. Imagine that. A man sits on the throne of heaven because that man is also God. And that man, before the cross, before the resurrection, before the ascension, told his disciples to publish the message of the gospel throughout the world because there would come a day when he would come again and receive his own unto himself. You and I need to recognize that though this world has gone on for 2,000 years and may go on for 2,000 more, it may go on for 10,000 more, I have no earthly idea, but I do know this. I know that what Christ said about himself was true. I know that he suffered on Calvary for my sins and for your sins. I know that on the third day, he raised himself from the dead, proving once for all that he is God. I know that the words that Jesus spoke are true. And when Jesus said that he was coming again, when Jesus said that the dead in Christ shall rise first and that those who are alive will be transformed, will be changed, and together we will all meet the Lord in the air, I know that that is the absolute truth and that I can bank my life and my future on those words because Jesus Christ is raised from the dead. Periodically, we will hear someone say that believers need to embrace the cross of Calvary. At other times, we will hear people say that we need to embrace Brace the resurrection of Christ. I'm telling you that this great drama of our salvation played out upon the stage of history, that these are merely acts in one event. And that one event is my salvation and your salvation through Jesus Christ our King. Embracing the cross, we understand that to mean sacrificial living, even as Christ sacrificed himself for us. Embracing the resurrection, it means embracing hope for today and for tomorrow. 
Let's combine those and understand that they go together. That sacrificial living is based upon the fact that we believe in the hope that Jesus gives us for today and for tomorrow. This year, as we celebrate Easter Sunday morning, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are reminded that that resurrection, that portion of the drama gives power and vindication to the cross. We understand that it tells us that Jesus was who he said he was. We understand that it tells us that we will live again, that there is more to this life than we can see. And finally, that Jesus is going to return someday. The centrality of the resurrection, the physical resurrection of the body of Jesus Christ to our faith. We cannot, we must not compromise on this belief. Would you pray with me? Lord God, we come to you this morning and we thank you that Jesus Christ is alive today. That indeed, 2,000 years ago, he did rise from the dead. That what the apostles and the holy prophets tell us is the absolute truth and the word of God. We trust that Jesus is alive today and that there is hope in this world and beyond this world because Jesus is alive. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. And the night before Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, the Bible says that in the midst of Passover, predicting his death, and the sacrificial nature of his death, which the resurrection would vindicate, he gave his followers a meal. We call it the Lord's Supper, communion, holy communion. It is a spiritual meal for us with very physical elements as it points to how our salvation was paid for on the cross of Calvary. And it is appropriate on Resurrection Sunday to celebrate this meal representing the death of Jesus Christ because there would be no resurrection if there was not first the sacrificial death. And the resurrection tells us the meaning and the power of the sacrifice that was made. So Jesus, taking the bread, blessed it, and gave it to the disciples. Would you pray a blessing over the bread with me this morning? Lord, we thank you that Jesus willingly sacrificed himself for our salvation. We thank you that Jesus is alive forevermore today. For that tells us that that sacrifice, the breaking of his body, the shedding of his blood, was accepted by you, the Father. We praise you for what Jesus has done on our behalf. For it is in his name we ask this blessing on this bread this morning. Amen. Take and eat all of it. Likewise, after the supper... He took the cup and he said that this cup was the cup of the new covenant because every covenant is ratified with blood and our covenant with God is ratified by the blood of Jesus Christ. And he blessed this cup. Would you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for the shed blood of Jesus Christ because we know that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. We thank you, Father, 
that you willingly gave your son and that he willingly gave himself that we might be saved. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Taking the cup, he said, drink all of it. We are united together by the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Though we are physically separated from one another this morning, we are together. We are together as a church, as a family that cares for one another, that prays for one another, that loves one another. And I will tell you, Though you are seeing me this morning, I'm not seeing you, except in my mind's eye. And this morning, this particular Easter, has been quite emotional for me in both the preparation and even the delivery of the message without seeing your smiling faces this morning. My prayer this Easter Sunday morning is that God will soon raise His church and that we will all be together. We've already proclaimed that day, not knowing exactly when it will be. We've already proclaimed that day as Resurrection Sunday. We will have missed the physical, separ the physical celebration of Easter together, so we are going to proclaim that day, Resurrection Sunday, because God will have raised us from this event and brought us back together. I pray for the soon coming of that particular Sunday. Until then, we will worship just like this three times a week. We will keep the faith. We will walk with Jesus. We will love one another. We will pray for one another. We will encourage one another. Through our text, through our phone calls, I will keep you informed through our newsletter as well as text messages this Sunday, this Easter Sunday. I pray that God will not only bring us back together very soon, but I pray that He will keep you safe, that He will keep your family members and your loved ones safe, that you will have a glorious day today as you remember the resurrection of Jesus Christ. God be with you. I will see you on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. God bless you all. Happy Easter 2020.